Oh, hey, it's David Heatley here from Cycling Inform. And today I'm going to be talking about the five levels of cycling performance. So I'm just going to share my screen here. So, uh, so this is uh, it's a triangle that I've drawn here. And at the top of the triangle, you'll see uh, the word speed. So uh, this is a representative of like an iceberg floating in the sea. And this uh, wavy line here is <laughs> represented of uh, the sea so a lot of cyclists when they're looking at improving their performance they look towards doing speed work or high intensity interval training to help them improve their performance and look i've got a few videos about uh, how there's some issues with speed work but don't get me wrong speed work is still an important component but there are four other levels of our cycling performance that we need to also address to make sure that we get a really good boost with our cycling performance so the first one down the bottom here is uh, consistency. Okay, now the reason why consistency is really important to our training is that we need to be consistent with our training. Makes sense, really. If we're not consistent with our training, then we're not going to be able to get consistent results with our cycling performance. There's a couple of clients that I work with, two types of clients. The first type of client, they're very consistent with their training but the training that they're doing is not meeting the outcome that they want. So as a result, they don't get very good performance improvement. The other type of client is a client that is uh, having issues with consistency, all right? And we really need to address that issue around consistency first before we start on any of the other levels with their training, because uh, if they're not consistent with their training, then they're going to have problems. And we've got a lot of tools that we use when we're working with our clients to work on improving their overall consistency. So if you're struggling with your consistency, then we can certainly help you there. All right, so the next level is base. Okay, how big is your base? And base is, we, we sometimes call it endurance. All right, and the thing about base training is that, say you're uh, riding for an event that's maybe uh, 170 kilometers long, all right? Okay, now a lot of people think when they're training for an event like this that they need to sit on a home trainer for 60 minutes and smash themselves silly doing some high intensity interval training to help them in this area here. All right, but uh, what well, the problem is that uh, they're not actually working on improving what we call their level of fatigue. All right, so say their event's 170 kilometers long and they get maybe an hour into the event and they find that after that point, they start getting really tired. So the next thing we need to work on with our clients is making sure that we've got enough endurance in their training to be able to complete the event. All right, so say they're racing 80 kilometers. And again, you know, it's important, that's a kilometer, that they have enough endurance to get to the end of the event here. All right, so, so that's the next level is working on endurance. Then we work on strength. Okay, so once we've got the athlete to a level where we've got um, them being able to get to the event without being fatigued too much, then we want to start working on their strength. Now, strength's used for hill climbing to improve your speed on hill climbing. It helps with your FTP. Uh, so does base training as well. All right. Uh, and also, uh, it helps with bunch surges and riding in fast bunches. Fast bunches. I'll just put a fast B here. All right. So strength work really helps us develop enough power to be able to climb hills faster and improve our FTP and all those sort of things. And these things here, strength and base training, these are developed, developed slowly and they're lost slowly. All right. So if you find that there's inconsistencies in your performance, that you know you one day you're riding really well and the next day you're riding really not very well, uh, then by working on your strength and base training, you can help improve that. So we do a, a lot of work in this area here. And the interesting thing is that strength and base training is what actually builds a bigger engine. Uh, a lot of people think that it's speed training that builds your a bigger engine, but speed training is a little bit like nitro, adding nitro to a car. It's like if you, when you add nitro to a car, the car goes faster. But when you take the nitro away, you're left with the same car. And speed training is developed quickly 
and it's uh, also uh, lost quickly, all right? And it doesn't actually really build a bigger engine. It's like, like I say, adding nitro to a cast. And there's also a ceiling to how much speed training you can do before you start plateauing and going backwards. And speed training is built on the foundation that we've got below here. So we spend a lot of time working with our clients on building a bigger engine, you know, so that instead of driving around and cycling like in, in something like a Toyota Yaris or a Toyota Echo, you know, one of those small sort of, you know, round town type of cars that struggle out on the open highway, you know, we actually build a bigger engine in our athletes in the area of base and strength to improve all aspects of the cycling. And then when we, and when we add speed work to them, they get a really good lift. All right. So, and the final level here is technique. So cycling is very much like swimming in that technique is really important for developing efficiency. So this is where we develop efficiency in their riding. And what it does is that when you're doing endurance events or racing events, it means that you're able to have uh, less fatigue over that event. And it means that you're able to develop more power and have better performance for the overall ride without fatiguing so quickly. So technique's really super important. And we spend a lot of time working with our clients on technique because let's face it, a lot of people that come onto our programs really haven't been professionally taught how to pedal a bike properly or develop really good, efficient, smooth pedaling power through a lot of the pedaling stroke. So we spend a lot of time working on developing good technique at higher cadences and at lower cadences. All right. Anyway, so those are the five levels. I hope that helps identify some of the areas that you may want to consider focusing your attention on. Of course, we're here to help you. So if you need any help with your overall training, I'll just stop sharing my screen. So if you need help in preparing for your racing or recreational rides that you're looking at doing in the future, then certainly reach out and contact us and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to help you out. Anyway, it's been David Heatley here from Cycling Inform. Hope you're enjoying these videos and if you like them, give us a bit of a thumbs up and uh, also uh, follow our channel. All right, take care and be awesome on the bike.